What's up everyone? Welcome to the fourth the annual anti-chef ranking video. I do one of these each year where I just go through all my efforts in the kitchen from the past year for better or for worse and rank them. Sweet and savory, main course and dessert, baking, you name it. I'm gonna rank it. This year I'm gonna cover every single Jamie and Julia episode from 2022. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. To my calculations, that's around 53 recipes, give or take. Let me throw this warning out there to anyone that you know, is gonna get all up in arms with what I'm doing. I'm ranking my own efforts. Like this is all self-deprecating. So, you know, I'm not going after Julia's recipes at all. So if you're thinking like, while well, you're watching, oh, Jamie, you're being quite harsh with Julia's recipes, considering you made all those mistakes or your palate is that of a 12 year olds. Well, my retort would be, I know. And uh, yeah, I'm ranking myself. <laughs> now there's a couple stipulations to be able to make it onto this year's list. And uh, first one would be that it has to be, of course, made in 2022. So there was a couple recipes from last year that didn't make last year's ranking video and they're not gonna make this year. So they're kind of in like that gray zone. And you know, apologies go out to the Croquenbush and to the Belgian beer stew, Carbonade à la Flamande, which was sensational and would rank really highly on a list but not this year's. Another one that I just do not know what to do with, I don't know how to rank it, it's the French baguette. Like, how do I place that on a list? I gave it the good old college try, I struggled with it, it wasn't my finest effort. If there was anything I learned from making that thing, it was just to like buy one. It tastes like a baguette. All right, let's do this. The worst of the worst goes out to, and this is a no-brainer. We can all see this one coming a mile away, Aspic. The liver goes into the mold. Fill up with the aspic. This is the hardest part, transporting them to the fridge. Yowza, I couldn't even eat it. It was just not my cup of tea. It was just dreadful to me. Uh, yeah, it's well-earned last place finish. What can I say? If someone had a gun to my head and said, eat this chicken liver and aspic, uh, I'd say pull the trigger. <laughs> Next up is the roast squab dinner. I had never had squab before. I wasn't familiar with it, so I didn't realize that you have like one little bite of meat and that's it, the squab is done. You know, it's a little pigeon, little, little pigeon. I was just left with nothing but bones. So it was very fleeting. I had like two small bites. I made this whole like dinner though and everything else was just kind of like completely soaked in butter to the point where it was just too much. So it was just kind of like a mess of a meal, quite honestly. Number 50 goes out to the artichoke hearts. And here's the thing, like, listen, I like artichokes, you know, they're tasty. Um, it's hard to believe that uh, you have to, you know, give up all of this stuff just to get the heart, which I'm, I'm hoping this is what this is. There was a lot of parts of the artichoke that I could have quite frankly eaten, but I, had never cooked with an artichoke before. I didn't even know how to like peel it. So I was just like taken aback with what I was doing and the recipe wasn't really helping me out. And uh, yeah, I kind of wasted a lot of the artichoke and I feel kind of about that. There's just a lot of effort and a lot of ways for far too little a reward in my opinion. And that is why the artichoke is way down at the bottom of the list. Number 49 is duck a l'orange. And this one is just a huge learning experience for me and it breaks my damn heart to put it so low on this list, but you know, I didn't like what I made. I know if I went to a nice restaurant and ordered duck a l'orange or someone else made it for me who knew what the hell they were doing, I would love it. But it was my cooking. It wasn't on point that day and I'll be the first to admit that. Also, I gotta mention something about the smell of that duck. As soon as I opened the packaging to that thing, it reeked. It smelt up the entire house for days. That odor was just stuck in my nostrils and it wasn't rotten. The, the duck was fine, but what's supposed to happen once you remove it out of the packaging is uh, you're supposed to wash it. That's what I've been told. It's supposed to wash it just to rinse off the smell and uh, just to clean the whole damn thing. And I didn't do that. So uh, yeah, it smelled. 
Whew. Moving on. All right, number 48 is the 30 minute chicken dinner. And the title of that should just give you all the information you need to know. The dish was rushed and the taste of it reflected that. Number 47, apple charlotte. Uh, you know, I'm disappointed with its placement, but I was just like turned off by the amount of butter I used on this recipe. Like the bread that molded the entire dessert was completely drenched, soaked in butter. Like it was a sponge. Of course it didn't keep its shape when I unmolded it. That being said though, the apple filling was to die for. And if I had that in like a very well-made apple pie, I'm telling you, it was some of the best apple filling you could ever ask for. It just wasn't like the dessert wasn't just, it wasn't there. All right, next up we have potato cheese sticks. These things were great as what they were. Uh, they were thin, probably a little too thin on my part. And maybe I overbaked a few of them by, I don't know, a couple seconds to a minute or so. But there were some that were cooked perfectly and those ones were really, really great. You're stacking it against other things on this list. It's kind of difficult to do. Was it tasty? Incredibly so. But, you know, there's a lot of great things coming up. So let's just move on. Number 45, we have braised sweetbreads. By far the biggest shock on this list to me is how highly this is placing. Obviously the idea of it and the look of it is kind of, you know, it's, it's a lot to take in, but I was really hungry when I ate it and I didn't mind it, kind of hit the spot. What can I say? Number 44, I have the walnut cake. There was a lot of cakes that I made this year. This had to be one of the, it wasn't as remarkable as the other ones that I made. You know, I kind of made it and I just moved on with my life. It was good and it tasted as was described for sure. In terms of execution, a little improvement needed really to, to rank it higher. Anyway, decent cake and that's where I've put it. Veal scallops, number 43. And this one takes me back to a lot of the videos I was making in 2021. Last year's ranking video, I talked a lot about these heavy cream sauces that were covering some sort of meat. Honestly, I could have been just a little more conservative with the sauce on this one. It would have been um, great. And you know what? I liked it how it was. It was a good dish. Number 42 is cheese puffs. Fresh out of the oven, these things were to die for, but they had a shelf life. It was like 30 minutes. And then after that, they turned very soft. So they went from like a crisp, beautiful shoe pastry to something rather unremarkable, rather quickly. As time goes by, these are starting to feel more like a brioche bun or something. When you're making as many as I ended up making, you know, that's gonna affect the overall score of this thing. It's gonna put it number 42 on the list. Number 41, chicken fricasse. I know this dish is a classic, for sure. At least that's what I'm told. But when you make as many Julia Child recipes as I make, this one just like, I kind of forget all about it. I can't even remember really eating it. What it tasted like, you know, I think I have a general idea and I thought I remember it. If I'm looking at the video like I am right now, uh, it looks like I'm pretty happy about it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna place it right here. I think that's fair. Also, I'm gonna give a big shout out to moi for pronouncing one of the most famous French dishes of all time completely incorrectly. It's called chicken fricasse, fricasse, and others labeled fricasse, fricasse de poulet à la ancienne. Chicken fricasse, I know that now. Number 40 is a very recent effort, so recent that I haven't even finished the video as of filming this, it is the leg of lamb. Number 39, we have stewed rabbit. Yeah, I made a stew out of a rabbit. I bought a full rabbit, I cut it down, I butchered it, and I cooked it. And if I told a younger version of myself this, I'd probably slap myself in the back of the head and said, you're crazy. But I did. Honestly, the first few bites here have just been me trying to uh, process what the hell I'm doing right now, which is eating rabbit. 
and I enjoyed it. Hey, it was pretty good. Tastes like chicken, looks like chicken. Can't believe it's not chicken. Number 38 is pork chops. I'm not a big pork chop eater. In fact, I never eat them. But uh, yeah, this one gets two thumbs up. Man, this is solid stuff. Number 37, chocolate souffle. As described, next, number 36 is moule marinier, which is steamed mussels. Toss in the pan. And I have a funny, funny relationship with mussels. Uh, they've made me sick a few times. Uh, violently ill. <laughs> so, you know, why am I eating them again? Well, that's because I am who I am. And uh, you know, I enjoyed them. I didn't get sick. And it was uh, quite a lovely feast, might I say. 35 is the orange mousse. And, you know, Julia Child has no shortage of orange flavored desserts. You know, I've made quite a few of them. This is one of them. And it was a good one. And it was a frozen one. And uh, yeah, I just made it. It was actually really good, so thumbs up. Number 34 is the crepe cake. Not, no, say it right, Jamie. Crepe cake, crepe cake. Mound of French pancakes filled with cream cheese, spinach, and mushroom. Gâteau de crepe à la Florentine. It's a big mound of crepe. <laughs> a nice light brown on one side and then a spotty brown on the other side. I really like this crepe. This one's really nice. Is there any other ones like that? One's pretty good. Oh, that one's really nice too. Uh, was, this one was a lot of work. There was a lot of different components involved. It was super heavy, because it was just a big mound of this stuff. Holy hell, this weighs four pounds. And that's without a slice in there. Lots of great flavors, and I just love the whole darn thing. Would I recommend it? Hell yeah, I would. It's fantastic. Number 33, coffee souffle. This is probably my best souffle to date. This is my latest and my greatest. You know, I've been documenting this souffle journey I've been on since the get-go. And uh, yeah, I really like this one. You know, truth be told, little secret between you, me, and the fence post. Uh, this was my second attempt at making this, this recipe. Uh, this is the first time in my channel's history where I made something, a finished video, and then I scrapped it because it just was, there's something off with the video. Oh, f I'm adding the wrong thing to the wrong thing. Anyway, that being said, that video, the lost video, uh, is gonna end up on Patreon. So if you want to see what that ended up looking like, yeah, head over to my Patreon and I'll release that very soon. Number 32, we got the Rum Baba Cake. And this one here was a boozy, fantastic little dessert. It was very generous. Loaded those sons of bitches right. Honestly, this one didn't last long. It was just like I took it out of the oven, I drenched it in some, some rum, scarfed it down, poof, gone. <laughs> 31, the, the peach dessert, Peche Cardinal. You know, it's simple, sweet, elegant, nice, change of pace, honestly, because it was, uh, you know, there's something about this dessert. I should have been able to take the, um, the pit out of the peaches, which I didn't. <laughs> Julia didn't say to do it, so I didn't. Anyway, that's what I should have done. It doesn't affect the overall score, though. It was great. Look at this cheek. Number 30 is gonna be the French baked Alaska flambe. La surprise de Vesuve. La surprise de Vesuve. What I just said. Uh, I made this one to celebrate 100,000 subscribers. This is the 100K Jamie and Julia episode celebration. And, uh, <laughs> and, as of filming this, I'm well over 200,000 subscribers, which is wild. Crazy. I'm familiar with Baked Alaskas, but what sets this one apart from the other ones that I've made, well, I made only one other successful one, but what sets this one apart from it was that I made every part of it from scratch, including the ice cream. And the ice cream was fantastic. Also, you get to light it on fire, which is always a great time. The next three on the list here, I think really just 
help me define the show as a whole. I will explain as we go along, but let's see here. Number 29, I have the orange cake. The orange... The show must go on. I mean, it's rush hour traffic outside, but like I gotta film this thing. You know, there's only a few more days left in this year. So orange cake, you know, I went through something demonic in this episode. It was like, something was messed up in my head. Murphy's Law, you know, everything that could go wrong went wrong. And it was just a terrible time in the kitchen. It's awful. Halfway through the recipe, I almost quit. Uh, I almost quit the show, honestly. I was thinking a lot while I was making it. I was like, do I even want to keep doing with this? Do I even want to keep making this show? And I just kept making mistakes and being clumsy and, you know, misinterpreting things and skipping parts of the recipe altogether just because my brain wasn't working. <gasps> oh. But I just kept at it until we got to the end of the recipe and I had in front of me a cake, a cake. It wasn't exactly what Julia had intended, I'm sure, but you know, taking a bite out of it, didn't matter how it looked, the taste was there, it made me happy. It was like a little victory lap each time I took a bite and I got through it, exactly. This video gets a lot of credit for like helping me reach a wider audience. I'm sure a lot of you found me because of this one. Yeah, I just approach things differently now after this because yeah, it's just, I've become far more accepting of the fact that, you know, if things don't turn out, that's okay. You, you're gonna be able to tell your story anyway, and people might be able to relate to uh, what you're going through. It's fucked. It's over. I don't know what to do. Looks like shit. Number 28 is the cassoulet. Now it's taken me so long to finally make this recipe because I just look at this thing. And uh, yeah, the recipe is a monster. And no matter what people tell me, I have a lot of people say, you know, this recipe is designed to use all the leftovers in your fridge. And you, you know, you take them all and you throw them together and you cook it and it's done. You know, it shouldn't be that much work. But here's the thing, I was making this recipe from scratch as it's presented in the cookbook. So yeah, it took me all day. And I watched the video of her doing this and uh, she made it look easy peasy, although I am very alarmed at the pig nipples on the skin. This recipe wasn't necessarily hard. It was just a lot of work and it was just like, I was exhausted by the time I ate it, but I loved it and it hit hard. You know, here's the thing. I know I added way too many breadcrumbs to this thing. They absorbed all like the cooking juices, the liquids, the, the soup part of this dish. And you know, it's a shame, Mary Jane, but that's what happened. I still enjoyed it. So number 27 is the French jelly roll. And I have a strong love-hate relationship with this thing. You know, love because uh, it was a tasty little cake if you eat it once. Hate because I had to make it four different times. I was trying to achieve that roll up cake, right? It's all about presentation and that was the whole goal. So although the cake tasted exactly the same, each time I made it, I could only get it to roll up on the last turn. Oh my God. Oh my God. Anyway, will I ever make it again? Probably not. I've had enough of that cake to last a lifetime. I'm done. I'm done with this cake. I hate this cake. Really great, but I hate this cake. Now the orange cake, the cassoulet, the jelly roll cake, I poured my soul into making those videos. So although the recipes themselves aren't placed as highly as other recipes on this list, 
The videos themselves mean more to me than other recipes, if that makes sense. They took a huge chunk of my life. <laughs> anyway, number 26 is the deviled chicken, or the grilled chicken, or broiled chicken, however you want to call it. This recipe got kind of, uh, well, there's like a little bit of a lost in translation situation here because the cookbook that I'm following along to is the British version of Mastering the Art of French Cooking, which is a book meant for American audiences. But when they wanted to sell it in the UK and in England, they had to, you know, convert the measurements to metric and they had to change some of the terminology so that you know, Brits and other people on the other side of the pond could understand what the hell they were reading. So something like in my cookbook, the British version, it says grilled chicken. In the States, you know, that's broiled chicken, you know? But when I'm reading something that says grilled chicken and I'm in the States, I'm just instantly thinking it's grilled chicken, not broiled chicken. So, hey, so at the end of the day, I did a little bit of both, grilled and broiled, and it turned out to be some damn good chicken. Cheers. Number 25, stuffed pumpkins. You know, this ended up being better than I ever thought it would be. I mean, the recipe is hilarious. It is, a, you know, it's a pumpkin that is just completely full of heavy cream. I mean, more or less. And uh, it was delicious. So yeah, good job. Number 24 is potato pancakes. As described, they are what they are and they excel at being that. Number 23, we got steak au poivre. Or what I ended up making, steak frite. Pepper steak with brandy sauce. Just remember this being a tough day in the kitchen. <laughs> you know, another tough day in the kitchen. Things are really falling apart right at the last minute. I'm not gonna lie. French fries have been just waiting too long and I tried to reheat them in the oil. Now that it comes to cooking steak, I get really pissed off if I overdo it. And right here, I overdid it. And what makes it worse is that this is all on camera. I don't know what it is with cooking steaks and me. It's just like, I can never get it exactly how I want it. And it's just a matter of like, it's a game of like seconds. What I ended up making was enjoyable to a point, but you know, there was a lot of stress involved too. And you know, that affects the overall enjoyment of this dish. So uh, yeah, I know everyone's got their preferred method for cooking steaks and that works best for you and you might do it often enough to, to have perfected it, but I don't do it that often so I'm always just experimenting. And when I'm experimenting, it's usually on the show and when I'm filming on the show, I can easily get stressed out and then that's why I'm left with a steak freed at number 23 instead of, you know, further down the list. Moving on, number 22 is the lamb burger. Yeah, I got a little creative with this one. I designed that whole burger, more or less. I mean, the patty was Julia's lamb burger patty, but I was repurposing a brioche dough that I had hanging out in a freezer for a few months, and then I was topping it with ingredients that I decided would work well with the burger, and it ended up being pretty damn great. Good little burger, good little burger. Number 21, I'm going with the watercress soup. This is dedicated to our little friend Scott. Scott the snail, who I found in some some of the watercress. What you wanna do first is wash the stuff because you never know what it's been or what the hell that is. That's a snail. That's a freaking snail. Please welcome to the team for one day only, our team mascot, Scott the snail. And you know, I grew attached to Scott and so did you and our little community here. We, we talk about him often. He's left his mark, no pun intended. Where the hell is the snail? Where did it go? Where the hell is Scott? Hashtag, where's Scott? Uh, I figured it out. In the heat of the moment, I may have thrown the book on top of him. Blend the yolks and the cream in the mixing bowl. Back to the watercress soup. It was good. It was like a different type of soup than I'm used to. I'm not really familiar with watercress, so it was like a new new taste for me. I love the soup, and I love Scott. Number 20 is the lobster bisque. What I got here is two one and a half pound lobsters. Because this is such a labor intensive recipe, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna have enough bisque at the end of it. So yeah, it's double trouble today. In my 
humble opinion, this recipe is far too complicated. Like, like it's a, it's like a comical how complicated it is. There's just, there's so many words on the page and granted, I could have done a better job following them. Couple hiccups in there, and a couple of mathematical errors. Do not want to risk this being wrong and screwing up the whole dish. I have to abandon the lobster butter. Great bowl of bisque though. Expensive. Number 19, I'm going with the pumpkin pie. Probably the best pumpkin pie I've ever had. The experience in making it, whole other story. There's just stuff going on behind the scenes, you know? I just couldn't get my shit together. And the first day I made it, the dough was rolled out way too thin. It looked ridiculous, so I kind of put a pin in that day, and I went out there the second day and tried to make it again. And I did. Came out of the oven, it looked great. When I cut a slice out, it was like raw underneath because I rolled the dough out too thick that time, and I. I had bought a new pie dish that was too deep. And then I went out there for a third day and I, I made the damn pie and it was fantastic. But if the pumpkin pie really wanted to place higher on this list, you would take the filling from the second pie and the crust from the third pie. You combine forces, you got yourself, you got yourself a banger. That might even be top 10, might be top 10 stuff. Number 18 is going to the casserole roasted chicken. You know what time it is. <laughs> There's yeah, it's for the cat. It's casserole roasted chicken time. Casserole roasted chicken with tarragon. And then there was a mushroom stuffing in there too. This, you know, as far as I can remember, everything went smoothly with this one. And, you know, cutting it open here, kind of looks funny when the mushroom stuffing comes spilling out, but it was a great plate of food. It was great. And uh, I so much so that I've remade it since this episode and I'm gonna remake it again. Tomate a la Provencale. Number 17. Tomate a la Provencale. Tomatoes stuffed with breadcrumbs, herbs, and garlic. By far like the freshest recipe on this list, for sure. If I was gonna pick a recipe that I would make on the regular, that I could eat guilt-free and just feel good, really, just like fresh goes a long way, it would be this one. Tomatoes leads right into this one right here. A vegetable dish, number 16, cauliflower au gratin. This is tied with the tomatoes, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna tie it. There's an attachment of guilt involved when you're eating this one, even though it's a vegetable dish, but it's like swimming in this cheesy Mornay sauce. Gratinade, what's not to love? Number 15 goes with the peekaboo. Peekaboo. I made a cheese tart and a jelly tart of French pastry. Jalousie, as they say. I don't know, I don't say it. I say peekaboo. Peekaboo, which is a word I haven't said out loud in probably 30 years. These were both insanely fantastic. And the pastry, nice and flaky, just terrific. And both pastries, they stole my heart. I didn't think I was capable of such things. This tastes like something that was made by someone that wasn't me. It tastes like I bought it somewhere. Here's the strawberry one. Peekaboo. All right, number 14, Julia's hamburger. Beef tech hash a la Lyonnaise. I've gone back to this recipe. I've tried it out a few other times and I just love the taste of these burgers. You know, the flavoring, the seasoning. I, I get a lot of feedback about this one because a lot of people want to tell me this isn't a burger, it's a meatloaf, it's a Salisbury steak. The patty includes onions and eggs and there's no bun involved with this recipe. My response is, I don't care. I, I call it whatever you want, I don't know. For me, it was a great burger. But if you wanna call it meatloaf, I don't care. I don't get involved in these sort of debates, they're pointless. Oh, great stuffed mushrooms there too. They were really nice. All right, number 13 is going out to the potato leek soup. Or if you want to call it leek potato soup, it's up to you. I don't care. Again, I don't care. Do whatever you want. Like this thing is so simple and beautiful and this version was green, but I've had it like other colors before. <laughs> I made the Vichy Soise, which is a variation of the soup, which is a cold potato leek soup. That one was white. 
This one's green. It's one of my favorite soups of all time. I would rank it much higher on this list, but you know, it took me like no time to make it, no time to cut the video together, just post it and kind of forgot about it, honestly. It's just like a flash in the pan of a moment in my life. So uh, I'm just gonna leave it where it's at now. Number 13 seems like a good spot for now. Number 12 is cabbage soup, soup au choux. When I think about this recipe, I think about what the weather was like outside. This is a cold winter day and I was just, I just wanted a nice hot bowl of soup that was hearty and filling and was gonna make me feel good. That's what I got. Made me feel great, actually. Number 11 is the orange Bavarian cream. Another orange flavored dessert. That's the fourth, I believe, orange mousse, orange cake, the jelly roll, this, yeah, four. And then last year there was the crepe Suzette, that fifth one, I believe, in the orange flavored category. And I say the second best one, in my opinion. Smooth, jiggly, velvety, I think. Uh, fantastic. Scarfed it right down. All right, we're moving right along here. What we got now, we're cracking the top 10. La Marley, brioche strawberry shortcake. Look at that. You can see I just instant smile because I know everything went smoothly that day. It was just like a good day in the kitchen, finally. And yeah, I don't want to gloat, but I just feel like, you know, I knocked it out of the park. It was a home run. Yeah, look at this thing, it's fantastic. Look at it. Good day in the kitchen. Good day. Number nine, number nine, number nine. Il Flotant, the floating island. Julia Child's favorite dessert. Apparently, that's what I read somewhere. Uh, yeah, it was really good. It's pretty good. Really good, yes. Looking at it here and now, it's just a thing of beauty. Look at that meringue, and there's all praline up in it, and surrounded by the creme anglaise right there, and holy cannoli. This thing is, uh, is really good. It's not a cannoli, though. Number eight is going to the turkey ballo team. It's not just all about taste with this one. It's all about the technique and how it looked in the end. Uh, I'm really actually kind of just proud of myself that it looks like that. Yeah, I never cooked a turkey before in my life. Whoa! I should have done this over the sink. Oh, this is a terrible start to the video. Just terrible. What the f Obviously I was deboning it there and you know, I filled it up with this very interesting stuffing right here, and then I sewed it back up, and look at it, cooked it into the sweet spot. This is a big success in my books. Very happy with this. And we've really just come to the point now where we're splitting hairs. Like, uh, I've been doing this kind of the whole video, honestly, but now it's becoming more of a challenge, because I'm looking at this order, and we're in the final seven, and, you know, places could be swapped easily if, you know, one little thing change the course of this list. Number seven is soup au pea stew. Julia Child's vegetable soup. And this was the first recipe I made this year, way back in January. So it was a while ago, but it has left quite the impression, might I say. I love this thing, it's 10 out of 10. Plentiful, no shortage of fantastic bites in there. And uh, yeah, my only regret is that uh, yeah, soup au pea stew. Pea stew is the French version of Italian pesto. Pesto and pea stew have uh, fresh basil in there. That's what it's supposed to have. And for some reason, because I was following the cookbook, I thought it was all right, but totally not. Four tablespoons of chopped basil, uh, which I should have bought fresh basil. Um, I didn't. So uh, there's an alternative here. One tablespoon of dried basil. Faux pas, I should have used the fresh stuff. Uh, as a mistake, that's only okay because it was at the beginning of the year. This point in time, if I was making that type of mistake, no, unacceptable. Number six, cream of mushroom. This is the soup of the year, everybody. And it's because the soup au pea stew made this fatal flaw of not using fresh basil. So the cream of mushroom soup has a clear path to being the favorite. It was like super complex flavors. There was like some sort of tanginess in it that I remember. The soup didn't last long. I ate it in a matter of like, a couple minutes and it was gone, gone forever. So uh, yeah, fond memories of that soup, but also just quick memories and that's it. Breathtaking. 
So I'm wondering what the deal is with Julia Child's Beef Wellington. How come no one talks about it? How come there's no videos online of anyone trying to make it? Oh! Man makes some, some fair points. Uh, the Beef Wellington is number five. I was pretty intimidated to start this recipe. I'm kind of on edge about it, so I want to get it right. I'm focused. I don't want to f up. It's similar to lobster bisque and the cassoulet, where you just look at the recipe and you're exhausted. There's just so many words on the page, so many things you have to do, just page upon page, and you're just so much reading. <sighs> you're using like a really pricey cut of meat, it's the tenderloin, and there's this weird step where you have to slice it into like these hockey puck shapes for some strange reason. I still don't understand. And you know, I was worried in the moment because I was like, well, I need to get this medium rare because that's what I think is intended. Although she never stated it was, but I thought it was. And then I look back at it now and I was like, no, I wouldn't have changed the thing. Everything was perfect. The brioche, the mushroom duxelle, tenderloin. <laughs> Great flavors, great taste, great ending to a great story. <laughs> Number four is the Charlotte Malakoff. This is a new one, and yet you know, I'm still just trying to expel the idea of those homemade ladyfingers out of my head. One of life's biggest regrets is dunking that stuff in. They've all completely fallen apart. It was hell making those things, and I just never want to do that again. So yeah, best decision I ever made going with the store-bought ladyfingers in the end, and they saved the dessert. This dessert was sensational, and I totally thought it was gonna be the best dessert of the year. So now that I'm looking at it, it's at number four, so that's interesting. My top three are somewhat surprising to me. Honestly, I would never have been able to guess this at the beginning of the year, but here we are. Number three, beef papillette. Beef rolls stuffed with onions, peppers, and mustard bread. Is this, did I find something here? Is this a diamond in the rough? This one came out of left field. You know, I didn't think I was gonna like this one as much as I did, which is the thing I keep saying, but I mean, it's true. But I, I knew, I knew after the first bite immediately, I was like, this is something special. You know, something special is going on here. My fork cut right through that tender beef. Flavor overdrive, look at that, the, the braising there. And it's just tender, tender as hell. <laughs> stuffing with the mustard bread and the pan sauce and one of the highlights of the year for sure. Number two, we're going with the Bouche de Noël, or if you want to call it the Yule Log, you call it the Yule Log. I'll call it either. But I just made this thing, uh, I mean yesterday, I just made it last night. Uh, so it's like still in the fridge, the, the wounds and the scars are still very fresh. No, 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 no. Okay, I told myself I'd never return to the terrible world of rolling up cakes, but I did, only a few months after the jelly roll. But here I am, making a, another rolled up cake. I can't believe I'm in this situation again. But yeah, that was in for way too long. It's like at one point in time, I'm looking at like the ugliest cake I have ever seen, that I've ever made. I was just like, what the hell have I done here? Well, it's a fixer upper. It starts spreading the frosting on top and like disguising this thing, hiding all the flaws and all of a sudden it's like lipstick on a pig. And then I started like adding in these like grooves into the frosting to make it look like bark. And then there was like woodsy trimmings and meringue mushrooms and spun sugar moss and sugared rosemary and sugared cranberries. It's like looking at this thing in front of me and I just cannot believe what I've created. <laughs> Absolutely no idea how I pulled this one off, but for some reason this looks beautiful. I'm standing there and it's, you know, it's the end of the year, so I'm starting to look back at what I went through this past year and I began the year at 30,000 subscribers. Now I'm looking at where I'm at now and I have this dessert in front of me, which is something that I would never have been able to make you know, this time last year. And it's like all oh, the feedback I'm getting on all these videos of people that are able to relate with what I'm going through or just like connect with it or offer their advice. And I'm just like, holy shit, like where am I at? Started almost like shedding a tear thinking about all this stuff. And I still got this cake in front of me. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. This is yesterday, so I'm just like, <laughs> and this is the thing, I haven't even tried eating it yet. So I take a bite out of it and I'm like, okay. <laughs> 
it tastes just as good as it looks. It's like the best chocolate dessert I've ever tried, ever. And I love chocolate desserts. So number one, I think it's the best dish I've made all year. It's the best food that I've had. It's my favorite new discovery. Osobuco. Or if you want to call it Osobuco, you call it Osobuco. I mean, I'll leave it with you. I don't want to get involved. This thing knocked my socks off. I didn't see it coming. I mean, I've heard of it any times before. I'd never tried it. I was anxious to. I was curious of what it was all about, but I'd never tried it. This is succulent and it's zesty and it's rich and it's delicious. And it might be one of the best things I've made on this show so far. I mean, I was a first timer with this, but eating the bone marrow, which I was just like, all right, that's where it's at, bone marrow. It may be a controversial opinion to say that this like Italian recipe from Julia Child, who is known for making the French recipes, would be my favorite recipe of the year. But uh, yeah, I, I only can speak the truth. And here's the thing, I've never tried an authentic Italian version of this recipe before. So yeah, I'm anxious to give it a try. I will keep you apprised in the, the, the situation. I will let you know when that happens, but for now, this is my favorite dish of the year. Apparently I'm in love with this dish. What the hell is going on out there? That's it. That's everything that I made for Jamie and Julia 2022. You know, 52 to number one. Well, 53 episodes in total. Sorry, French bag, I, you got the shaft. I am pumped to continue this adventure into the new year and just trying all these new foods. And hey, maybe I'll even revisit some completed recipes that deserve a second look. But yeah, I'm having a blast doing this, sharing this with all of you through the thick and thin. We're all in this together. This is Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. Bye. And before we head into 2023, I just want to give a shout out to my, my crew over on Patreon. You know, the silent supporters of the show. You can see all their names right here or right here. I haven't decided which side I'm going with. Now they're supporting the show in a big way every month. And if I ever have any like extra content that I'm uploading or if I'm doing a live stream and talking to people directly, that's happening over on Patreon. So it's the best way to support the show. There's extra stuff over there. There's a link in the description. There's also a link popping up on the screen. Of course, you don't need to if you don't want to. You can just stay here and continue to watch the show the way it is. Either way is cool. That's it though. I'll see you in the new year. Bye bye.